What up, what up? Welcome, everybody. Thank you for tuning in and checking us out here at More About Nothing. The show where we keep it all the way honest on 729 The Voice. Today, as always, my engineer on the ones and twos, Tony Middleton, my right hand, Jamal Owens, and my special guest, good friends, since since Southeast Raleigh, man, since since 10th grade, since driver, driver's ed and learner's permits, man. I got my man T. Gresham. Uh, today's episode, it's not going to get too heavy, but we're going to keep it honest. And uh, our first topic, we're going to talk about racism right now that's still going on in 2018. Um, not only just racism in America, but more importantly, more heavily, more seen is the racism with police. Uh, that's why my first guest is so important because he's able to give that perspective from the other side of the law. Uh, T. T. Gresham is a, a law enforcement officer. We're not going to say which department he's in, but just know uh, he he's on the he's on the front line every day, risking his life. Um, he he's a family. Uh, husband, father, son, friend, and so uh, thank you for coming, brother. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, first, I want to salute you yeah. on choosing that field. Me personally, I can't do it. Yeah. For a, a number of different reasons. So I want to thank you and salute you for you know risking your life every day to keep those of us safe. I appreciate it. Man. All right, I'm gonna just jump right into it, man. Yeah. And Jamal, and Tony. Um, if y'all want to jump in as well at any time during the conversation, please do. Y'all know how we get down. It's, it's open mic here. Um, what is it like being a black cop, man? Mm. And, I'm, I'm, I, and I say that because other than the, the officers that I know personally, right. i.e. you, right. Mr. Mr. Twitty, he, he's retired now. Yeah. Most cops that, in these situations I've seen have been Uncle Tom's. Mm. Like the police chief mm. in Philadelphia that's... Being, uh, that's Ooh. handling this uh, yeah, yeah, Starbucks yeah. situation. Yeah, I saw what he said. Oh, so you, so that okay. Was, yeah. So that's what that's my problem is those officers who are in the proper seats right. to help make help make things better, but they don't. Mm. Have you caught any kind of backlash or nasty stares or crazy comments from black people when you're out making arrests or patrolling or whatever? Almost oh, definitely. So so you gotta you gotta look at it. Let's go back to the beginning. So when I was about to get into law enforcement, my mother and father both wanted me to become a fireman. That was that was the first thing out here in Raleigh. And I, I looked at them. and I was like, no, nah, that's not really what I wanted to do. My story is a little bit different. So my, my story was when we was at Southeast Raleigh, I was 16 years old. So I, I used to work at the finish line spot. Yeah. So I, I kept the shoes fresh. You know what I mean? I, I remember. Used to, used to take the paycheck from I, them. I remember. Put the paycheck right back into the company. Right. I, I remember doing doing the young and dumb stuff. So it all it all started for me because I came out of the store one night. We doing the the routine stuff. Next thing you know, that's we got robbed, right? So the two mm. dudes come up with us from both sides with the guns. You're talking and about the else. one on um oh over there on, by on Newburn? off of Newburn. Oh, tower, you remember that? Tower, yeah, 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 tower yeah, shopping center. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we we got a dude from the right. We got a dude from the left. They come running up on us, right? And so I'm sitting over there. I'm young. I'm 16. Boom! I'm straight to the cop. You know what I mean? I get in the car, I drive off, I call mom and dad, like, yo, listen, 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 this is just what happened. I'm breaking down, I'm crying, doing all this stuff. So the first thing was, I wasn't going to be a victim. You know what I mean? You got to take total control and the accountability of what somebody does to you. So that was the number one thing. Hey, you got a pen? That was, that, pen. That was, that was the number one thing. To be able that, to take, that's, that's my point, that's accountability. Gonna a, that's going to be yeah. a Facebook status later. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, so you got to be able to say, you know what? Remind this, me to come back to that. This happened. And simply because this happened, what are we going to do to make sure that we have change? The first thing that I think is wrong with any police officer is when you ask them why they didn't, ha- why are you becoming a police officer and they don't have a story, they give you something like, hey, man, the reason why I want to do this, I want to drive fa- cars fast, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, 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 I always I, I want to, quote unquote, uh, protect my community yeah, 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 or, 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 or serve or my community. Something generic, like, right. you know, I, I didn't have anything else to do, so I chose this. That's dangerous. That and those are the people who are right. killing niggas. I, I, so, to, to me, that's what yeah, I, I see. mean. So had a guy. Um, he's in the academy now. Yeah, over in uh, I ain't gonna tell you all the county, but he's he's in a it's just a, it's a breakneck county. Okay, and say, say this, less. yeah, and he um he was in he's in academy with a couple guys white men who haven't even been in a fight. And a lot of them, you know, where you're going through that stuff in the, in the academy where you, you know. you're doing that, that four, four or five minute, you know, going like that. Yep. He said a lot of them saying, I don't got time for this. I'm going to just shoot a nigga. 
I he believe said, that. He said, he, said, he said one of them in the academy looked at him and said, I ain't got time for this. I'll just shoot a nigga. I believe that. How, like... I believe that. I, and and then, like, just to the, the piggyback off what you said, like, yeah. uh, black cops and our Uncle Tom, uh, well, some in certain positions act like Uncle Tom. Sure. But I, I, I want to ask you. Yeah. Some Everybody's got strings that are being pulled. Mm-hmm. Is that sometimes what's happening versus what they truly believe? That... <sighs> Whenever I hear, whenever I hear the Uncle Tom phrase, right? Yeah. Whenever I hear that you you are the Uncle Tom, you are this, you are that. Um, you have certain departments that do certain things. I, I'm yeah. not going to say that one department is going to be just like another department. Say, for instance, we were talking about before we came on the air the Starbucks thing and everything else like that that happened. My man was trying to get out there in front of that, and so he yeah. quickly tried to say something to the effect of. Hey man, listen. My my officers did the right thing in this situation, and and he's just trying to cut it off before they say something about the officers. What he really realizes was, why well, nobody even talking about the officers at that point? They were talking right. about Starbucks. Right. They were yeah, talking exactly. about. You, you, I mean, if you really look at the whole situation, they were talking about that general manager who was blatant racist because you got this white woman that gets on right afterwards and says something to the effect of, "Hey, no, nah, I guys, I go in there and sit down for an hour, an hour, some change, and they never mess with me." Well, yeah, but I know each state has, and I'm sorry to cut you no, off. No, 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 you are. Right. I, I I know each state have different rules, yep. bylaws, guidelines, and yada yada yada. How much of the Constitution and law do police officers have to study before you earn your badge? Because it seems like what it appears outside looking in, what it seems like to me is they can pull us over or stop you from walking for any little thing they want. Right. And if you're not to back to what you talked about the last episode, if you're educated on yourself yeah. of the law, right. we might believe it. So how much of the law do you all have to actually know, memorize and learn? before graduating so so the the law in itself so you have a research and seizure you have the constitution so you have the first through maybe about the six that a lot of people are just going to go hot and heavy on whenever you're in 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 basic law enforcement training once you get out you go through your intermediate intermediate and then you also get your advanced so that's with more training so to get your 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 basic law enforcement training is about 600 to 650 hours in the state of north carolina now that could be pushed up a little bit more and that when I say push up a little bit more that depends on the agency in which you're you're getting it from so most of them have about a 600 plus hours of training that you must have before you actually are sworn and then you take your statewide exam that everybody takes but what about the, the content though the actual uh I don't know parts of the not the constitution um, right. I guess what I'm saying what are you actually learning though so, so what are you what what you're learning? And, and I think what I'm getting at is more along the arrest, search, and seizure. So that's what it seems like you're talking about. So stopping somebody, saying, "Hey, you you can't move from here. Let me let me let me dive deeper into whatever the situation is, whether it's a reasonable suspicion stop, probable cause stop, or whatever the case may be. Is that is that what, is that yeah. what I'm getting? So so essentially, that's a arrest, search, and seizure. That is a large portion class, just like report writing or anything else. Is it, is a large re- portion research class. Research and seizure. Uh, uh, arrest, arrest, search, and seizure. Uh, arrest okay. search and seizure. So that 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 portion of your class might be about almost 100 hours by itself. So there is a lot of content focused on that. And then not only is it just the class for arrest, search and seizure, where you actually learn the class part, you go out and you learn the practical portion as well. Okay. Yeah. The reason why I asked that because I know Philadelphia is obviously different from, uh, excuse me, Pennsylvania is different from North Carolina. Sure. What I'm saying is, if I'm that police commissioner of Philadelphia. Uh-huh. No, the officers, they weren't aggressive, right. I'm, I, which I was surprised at. So I do yeah. applaud them for, you know, remaining some level of professionalism. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'm going to say, why did you arrest these guys when they did nothing wrong? They're just waiting for their friend. Right. That's my that's my question. That's a, that's actually a, a very good question. So um, now I will give it to the com- police commissioner. He said one thing that I do agree with. And that, that, that thing that I agree with when he said it out there is, you call the law enforcement for a service. Right. Okay. Essentially, we are service. You, well, we should be service minded first. Right. You call you. Anyone calls law enforcement. We are to go. We are to hear something. So we might not have all of the facts of everything and we might not handle everything appropriately. And one officer may do it this way and another officer may do it that way. However, the the, the focus is still on the service piece. They call to say, hey, these guys are in here. 
They haven't bought anything, and you, and you got to go. All right. Put a pause in it right there, man. We're going to come right back. We're going to take a short commercial break. Yep. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned in to more about nothing on 729 The Voice. I came out in the 11th grade. Nobody was embracing you. The kids were cruel. It was very difficult to be gay. Not completing high school is more of a social thing than it was an academic thing. And even though all these years have passed, I still had that longing to have my diploma. I have a mentor, Maria, and she convinced me to continue my education. She just never judges. She's a true role model. From the depths of my heart, I thank you, Maria, for being a friend and a beautiful person. No one receives a diploma alone. And I'm honored to share this moment with you. Thank you. If you're even considering getting your high school diploma, go get it. You can do it. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. And it's worn like a badge of honor with good reason. Because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. Welcome back. Welcome back to More About Nothing. Thank you for tuning in to 729 The Voice. Um, before we went to break, excuse me, in our first segment, uh, we were talking about racism and police. And uh, I want to pick up, pick up right, pick right back up where we left off. Uh, we were talking about how the officers actually did not do anything aggressive. I and mean, they did. They were professional somewhat. But my, my question to you is, and like I said, I know Pennsylvania is different than North Carolina, but if those guys were not actually breaking any law why were they arrested because what what did they do that resulted to for them getting handcuffs put on they weren't harming anybody they weren't i guess yeah. i guess that you could say loitering maybe mm -hmm. but they weren't disrupting the peace they were they were bothering no customers mm -hmm. uh, they weren't stealing they were just sitting down waiting two I believe, uh, I think everybody's seen the video here. There was, there was a white guy in the vest. I think that was the guy they were waiting yeah, yeah, for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he kept in. saying, why are you arresting them? They, yep. they, they were waiting on me. What did they do? Da, da, da. Yep. Yep. So let me associate that quickly to what's going on right here um, in Raleigh, right? So Moral Mondays, y'all remember those? Yeah. So look at Moral Mondays. When the people went into the legislative building, it's the same as that thing. They, they weren't doing everybody. anything, and they arrested everybody. everybody. So it's simply, uh, whenever you go into something like that and you say, hey, uh, Oh, why are you here? They're telling you that you have to leave. The moment that you refuse to leave, I'm not going to arrest you, but I am going to say whoever owns that building, say, hey, tell this person in the presence of me, now that I'm here, that they're not allowed to be here. Same as Moral Mondays. Hey, the, those officers have no jurisdiction on that. However, whenever they get somebody who actually owns, not owns the building, owns the property, or in the control of it, they're able to say, hey, you need to leave the building. So and as soon as they say you need to leave the building and you say, you know what? Nope, I'm not going. You're now trespassing. Trespass. Just like somebody okay. coming to your house, they they, they want to hang out in your front lawn. You be like, nah, man, get up and go. So they were arrested for trespassing. They were arrested for trespassing. Now, what's the difference between trespassing and loitering? So is loitering just hanging out? So, so loitering can be, I mean, you can also have that as a loitering kind of thing, too. So loitering is almost like a hanging out and not paying. I, I haven't heard loitering honestly being charged in I don't know how long, man. Okay. I, it's more now along the lines of second degree um, and first degree trespass. And during the break, Jamal, you said you had a question for uh, T. Gresham. Yeah, so, you know, you were telling us about how, you know, even when you're in just regular clothes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah, how you, you get stopped. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Tell me what's the craziest run-in you've had while being a cop getting stopped. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Now, mind you, people, T. Gresham is a cop himself. Yeah. yeah a yeah, black yeah. cop. Yeah. So so what, what's crazy for me, um, and and this was this was a this has happened probably about three to four years ago. I was getting off of uh, a midnight shift and I got stopped and the officer said that my my the back of my um my license plate was dirty. 
That was that was the first stop, right? A uh, dirty license dirty, plate. A dirty, a dirty license plate, right? So I, I, now, mind you, whenever I go to work, I drive like a little old, old Toyota, right? Because I was like, you know what? I, I'll drive this car to work back and forth, and I'm going to leave my, 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 my car at the house, right? So back and forth, great on gas, everything else like that. So it's an old-looking vehicle. But when I looked yeah. at the tag, I was like, man, that's not really, that's really not all that dirty. So mm-hmm. I, I did I did get a little like I, I felt away, right? Yeah, so yeah, so yeah. I so I so I called I called my, my supervisor, I told him about the story. He was like, oh, okay, cool, cool, man. Don't worry about it. I didn't mind you, I didn't have my top of my uniform on. I still had the bottom of my uniform. So I took off like my shirt and stuff like that. So when I'm driving home, you know what I'm saying, safety precautions, all that kind of good stuff, so people don't see it. Oh man, that's a police officer riding next to me. So yeah, yeah. um <laughs> yeah. two weeks later, I was stopped again, uh-huh. almost in the same exact place. Right. This one was because I didn't have my turn signal. on, And I was like, man, what you talking about? You know what I mean? Because essentially in the state of North Carolina, whenever you're talking about turning your, your turn signal, on, you got to affect another vehicle. Man, it's 7 a.m. on a Saturday morning. How many cars do you all think is out on Saturday morning, 7 a.m.? It's right. not that many. I'm not yeah, affecting yeah, yeah. The, 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 the driving of anybody. But then the third one got me. You know what I'm saying? He just pulled me over. And whenever he said he pulled me over. He was just like, hey, man, your, your license plate is dirty again. And that's not that's just where I I, I kind of drew the line. Said again. I, yeah. So <laughs> so I, 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 it wasn't the no, 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 same cop. No, no, no. So, I mean, essentially, you can you can always look on the database and see what's going on, right? Oh, so you okay. can always see exactly what your car was stopped for if you're driving the same car multiple times right. in the same jurisdiction. So I, I just did not like that, man. I called my, I, well, I called my supervisor. And I was like, man, I kind of want to complain, this, that, and the third. Talk to my, talk to my supervision, and we kind of moved from there, but. That that was the craziest to me because I did not like the fact that I was getting stopped multiple times over and over for petty things that I was not even getting a citation yeah. for. Well, see, that same thing happened to me and Kerry. I was off. I was on Maynard Road. Yeah. Oh, that's and, why. And it was it was <laughs> it was going down a hill and it was traffic. It was about four or five. I was coming from class. Yeah. And I was going to work. There was no possible way that I could speed with all those cars on Maynard. Right. I seen the cop a mile away. So even if I was speeding, I had more than enough time to just. Chill. Right. There was a car in front of me, a car behind me. I didn't have my seatbelt on. Uh-huh. So when he did the U-turn, I'm thinking, he ain't see my seatbelt. So he stops me and he says, um, you know why I stopped you? I ain't going to incriminate myself. No, <laughs> I don't know. Mm-hmm. He said, you were speeding. <laughs> I said, okay, sir. Gave him my stuff. He comes back. Well, you didn't have a felony, so I'm going to just let you go. So what, what, would, what would be the purpose of him coming back and then Saying I don't have a felony. It's Why would he be checked for a felony for a speeding ticket? It's crazy how everybody has stories. I'm gonna give you two of mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, just to even hear real, real, real quick, just to even hear that somebody came back and said that you don't have a felony, I'm gonna let you go. It's absurd to me. That yeah. means that means he was looking for it. You're right. I mean, I mean, that's that. I mean, it it just is. That's not in general conversation anything that somebody would just evenly, you know, just remotely say. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and then just me being me. I mean, I had my my Bluetooth fan, so I was talking to my mom, right. and she heard it. And she said, don't you say nothing. I said, I'm going to let it go because I don't even have so much as a parking ticket on my record. Right. You know, thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Mom dudes be knowing, man. That's it. No, my, my first story is kind of light. It's it's uh it's upsetting, but nothing really transpired. It was crazy. I was pumping gas on uh Miami, Bo- not Miami Boulevard, Airport Boulevard, uh, near, near RDU. <laughs> and uh, as I'm finishing up, I saw, excuse me, I, as, I, as I'm pumping, I see two sheriffs. Pull into the parking spot. One bags in and one forward, you know, drives in forward. So they're talking to each other, you know, right out the windows. And I'm watching them watching me. I'm like, oh, it's about to be some, about to be some, some BS. And uh, my son was on the way. He wasn't born yet, but he was on the way. And I, all I was thinking about was him. So I finished pumping my gas. And as I'm putting the the handle back into the gas, the, the gas pump, the gas station, the cop pulls up. He blocks me in. One cop pulls in front of me, and then my headlights. The other cop blocks me in behind me, so I can't go forward or reverse. And he was like, uh, let me see your ID. I said, for what? He said, just let me see your ID. He, he, he got, he, he's, he's put a little more bass in his voice. He got a little more <laughs> aggressive. I said, for what? I said, I'm not doing anything. I said, I have a right to ask why you need to see my ID. And once I hit him with that, that's why I say it goes back to being educated. Right. I hit him with that. He changed his tone. He realized he was talking to somebody that might know some. Really, I ain't know that much. Right, but right, I, right, I knew right. I knew <laughs> that I had the right to ask why you why I'm being stopped. Right, right. And once he said that, he said, well, you're lucky you fit the description of somebody. I said, well, what's the description? 
he got quiet. I said, can you elaborate on what this description is? Right. Must have been big it's and black. Big and black. Right. Big and black. That's you. You look like him. That, I mean, that, <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty much. <laughs> and, and, but what happened was, I, I wasn't necessarily resisting, but I was saying, you just not going to get me for anything. Right, hey, right, bro, right, right. The other cop ended up getting out, mm -hmm. putting me in cuffs, bro. Oh. They searched me, took my wallet, took my ID. The cop that was in front of me, he went and searched my name. He said, oh, yeah, you're not the guy. Have a good day. I'm like, nigga. Nah. Now I'm upset the rest of the day. Yeah, 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 because it's going to so mess with you. Someone almost happened to me like that at the gas station um, off of Harrison. Like, I was, it was late night, and it was raining, and all of us, I'm pumping gas. I'm just sitting in my car waiting for my gas to finish, and I see three cop cars pause, one on the other side, one behind me. I'm like, did this lady call the cops on me? <laughs> like, I'm pumping my gas late. I got a full tank, so I got some time to wait. And I'm just sitting there. I'm like, I don't want to pull off, because what if they waiting for me to pull off mm -hmm. so they can say something? I put my hands on both the wheels. I made sure my light. I'm like, right. I'm good. You got to. Like, yeah. I'm just, it's, 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 it's terrible that in America, for right. somebody who's supposed to protect and serve, that when that, I see you, you go. when I see you, I don't feel safe. That's right. my, that's my problem with police. I feel police. safer walking through East Durham than I do when the cops pull up. That's, the, yeah. that's my problem with police. The ones that we are, in theory, supposed to call to protect us when we're in danger right. or feel threatened, they're the ones killing us. Right, right, right. And my second story is what left Black cops left a bad taste in my mouth. Mm -hmm. I was in Holly Springs. I had just left my mom crib, and I had a young lady with me. And I was just showing her where I grew up, so I was just driving her around. She's like, go down here. I'm like, nah, I said, we need to get back. So my, something, my instincts was like, nah, we need to get back to Raleigh. Yeah. You know what I mean? She's like, go, let's go down here. So I showed her, you know, my cousin's house, just, just showing her around. So I bust a U-turn in the graveyard. My family owns that graveyard. Like, when we die, that's where we go. Right. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> 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 you know, Everybody did. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, so that's where we go. So I was just showing with my grandparents, all my uncles, yada, yada, yada. So we leaving. And I seen the cop in my distance when I pulled into the graveyard. I seen him sitting there. So we, he passed by me. So yeah. I saw him pull over, and I saw him see me go into the graveyard. So he waited for me to come back out. Right. I come out. He pulls me from my head like, this is where it gets crazy. Black cop, I'm thinking, all right, cool. He knows what's going on with black folk. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm all right. yeah. I'm like, we safe. We ain't, we ain't got nothing to worry about. Right, right. He was like, pull you for your head. Like, I said, yeah, I know it's out. I said, man, I'm having uh, wiring issues. I said, it's not the bulb. I'm having electrical problems. I said, I'm trying to get it fixed. He said, okay, cool. You got any guns in the car? I'm like, bro, you was talking about my head. Like, I mean, I, I, that's what I said. To right, 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 I, right, I right, right, right. And I, and I kept it, honey. I said, yeah, I'll keep you with me. Yeah. And, you know, I got my papers. And he was like, well, where is it? I said, it's under the seat. I said, I had, I had my hands. On the, I had one hand on the steering wheel, one hand leaning out the door. I was like, man, just don't get jumpy. I said, it's under my seat. I said, it is loaded. Bro asked me to get out. He he uh, took, he took one out of the chamber, emptied it, took the clip out. He said, stand right here. He went, checked to make sure it wasn't stolen, had no bodies on it, nothing like that. Right. Everything was cool. Mm -hmm. This is where it gets, this is where black cops have disdained me. All right. He was cool until his partner showed up. Mm. When his partner showed up, that's when he turned up. Okay. okay. Pulled me over, searched me again. I'm like, bro, you already got my gun. I ain't got no drugs and you smell that. I said, bro, you see my son in the back seat? Yeah. Like, dude, like, so he pulled me over, got my hands on the trunk, spread, patting me down. The white, the, his partner shows up, it's a little white girl. Yeah. They both talking to me crazy. Like loud, sit down, don't move, stand still. Da, da, da. I'm like, bro, you won't doing none of this until Susie got here. Until, 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 until she got until your partner show up. So I'm right. like, so you so you you was a good old you was a good old boy. You was right. a good old whipping boy. You know what I mean? Right. So I said all that to ask you, what is it like inside the precinct, inside the locker room, when you ride with your partner right. if you, as a black cop, surrounded by all all the white boys? Right. Um. Because to me, it seems like he was putting on a show for his, uh, yeah, yeah. man, every time we get good, man, you want to go to commercial. God yeah. dang it. Man, stay tuned, y'all. We'll be right back. More about nothing. 729 The Voice. Please have a seat. I'll be honest. Your resume, it's not what I'm used to. I know. Okay, so... What would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need a hard worker. Good. I've got two part-time jobs and to help my parents pay the bills. I need problem-solving skills. 
I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find, cultivate, and train a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. The first time I met Morris, the door flew open, and I got this larger-than-life personality <laughs> talking at the top of his lungs. Hey, how you doing today? Oh, man. Oh, I totally forgot. Hold on. Let me get this for you. Oh. Just had a magnetic energy. So I thought, all right, we're definitely going to be friends. Drop off a warm meal and get more than you expect. Volunteer at americaletsdolunch.org. America, let's do lunch. America, let's do lunch. Looks like a bad dude. Hey, what's up, man? Welcome back, man. We are... Working right now, more about nothing on 729thevoice.com. Make sure you download it, stream it, listen. Hey, man, today's been a great episode, man. Again, real quick, man, I want to say thank you, T. Graff, for coming yeah, yeah. in, man. This is You've been giving us some, some great information. Yes, sir. Um, before we went to the break, and this is, and we're going to try to wrap up this topic here, man, because it's just getting me hot all over again, I don't, and I don't like being upset about nothing. Um, but we were talking about, uh, well, I was, what I'm getting at is, what is... What is it like being a black cop around a lot of white guys? So this is like I said, this is right. outside looking in, man. Right, right. And right. I don't want to sound racist because I'm not. I mean, I'm. I, sure. I like some white people. Right, right, right. I don't. Right. I don't trust most, but I. I like some. You know what I mean? I'm gonna keep it on on the show, man. Yeah, yeah, you got to. You but got to. Uh, when I look at the RPD, every time I'm in the Prince or riding in the car, I see a, I see a lot more white cops than black so i'm assuming that there are few right so what is it like being part of the few um do, do you hear those those slick comments n no not to your face though. no 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 i don't I don't hear any slick comments I, I i think for for me if i was to hear any of those slick comments i mean we definitely got to talk about them we definitely got to address them but to to say just for me just a black person just in an all white kind of almost majority kind of field it's just like anything else I mean, we've always been the minority in anything that we do, whether that be be high school or any other kind of school that no, we fact. went into. We're always been like that. That's you know fact. what I mean? Unless that's you went fact. to HBCU, you yeah. ain't never been the majority of nothing. That's so, yeah, that's um, I, I look at it from that from 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 that lens. But going back to your question before we went on the break, my thing is for that brother to do you like that. Now, I don't know the whole situation. I, I won't I won't speak on the whole situation. But my thing is, purpose has got to guide you. So my thing is, you can't switch up. Once somebody gets there, that's what pissed me off. He switched up. Yeah, I, I, you can't you can't switch up. My thing is my rapport, the way I treat you, the way I act, the way I I do anything needs to be consistent from the beginning to the end. Right, because that's your purpose. And, and, and that's my purpose. And, right, and and that's it, what, that's it, what, that's it was what on a late night too. Yeah, it was like one a.m. But even if it be, even if it's one a.m. and I can understand one a.m. something like that, you might have a more heightened sense of awareness. Oh, that oh, okay. that's natural. That's, that's natural. I, I would too. But my tone, my voice inflections, nothing should change unless something was presented to me to make it change. And how, how your story is, is told to me, and I know you very well, I know nothing happened right. in that story. So I, I'm, I don't understand the change once somebody else just got on scene. I, 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 don't, I don't see the cause for uh, you, uh, but that's we, just me. Uh, no, I'm going to wrap up this uh, segment. Uh, anything real quick you want to do, add or any more questions real quick? No, nah, just all? like what you're saying, though, about purpose. Like, anything you do, you have to do it with purpose. Oh, I sure. tell my sons that all the time. Yeah, anything right. done without purpose is unnecessary. Right. It is. And this is going to be my last question on this subject. Um, accountability. Here, yeah, and here's yeah. my other, my main... Uh, disdain or affliction or whatever you want to call it towards police is I always hear the phrase, "Oh, well, there are there are some good cops." I'm not going. I'm not saying there isn't. Right. I'm saying every time a mistake is made, every especially a murder on a black person, the police chiefs, fellow officers, you never hear nobody step up and say, "You know what? Yeah, we messed up. Mm -hmm. That was our bad." They always try to spin off because I work in the media, and it, and I I hate this sometimes about my job, what I do. Right. They always spin it to make it seem like it's the victim's fault he was murdered. 
oh well he he was he was he had a history of this yeah and when he was 14 he did this and da 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 but anytime it's a white victim you don't hear that mm. so my thing is what why is there no accountability why why is it that police are held on a high pedestal that they do no wrong when it's clearly they're the ones that are inflicting trauma for the survivors you know heartache for mothers who are grieving no these these are murders that somebody has a somebody has put their their child their son their brother their cousin in the ground yeah so yeah. Why, why is there no accountability especially from commissioners uh so I, I look at it this way when 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 you're talking about accountability um I look I look at it from the perspective of I love my profession absolutely love my profession there's there's a calling on my life to be exactly doing what I'm doing. There's a calling for me to be here right now with oh, yeah. you people oh, yeah. to, to, to oh, talk God about this oh, yeah. Most all, definitely. All, all day, right? Um, but it needs reform. And until that reform comes, these changes are, 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 aren't going to be made. Okay, so how do we get that reform? And that's, that's through these talks. That's through these conversations. That's through keeping this message going forward. That's through reaching out, li like, like yourselves, being able to reach out, having me come on this show. And collectively talking about it, making sure that your vote matters, making sure that <laughs> people matter. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk did, about we legislation. <laughs> We're going to be talking about a whole lot of different stuff because you've got to make sure that you put the right people in office. All this uh, 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 Jeremy Andering, you know what I mean? Right. Move, moving the lines now. We, we got to make sure that those things was happen. But that goes to my point. We finally got a brother, quote unquote, a brother sitting in the seat uh, as the head of a precinct. And he's still sucking and jiving and tap dancing. So well, there, there can be no reform as long as you have those kind of people sitting in the seats. And it's tough. I, I, I would never say that reform will come easy. No movement has ever come easy. I mean, and, I, and I'm thankful for Tony to give, you know, for giving us a platform to do oh, to have sure. this conversation. But we're not the first, and I'm pretty sure we won't be the last. We, we have won't. this conversation. This conversation's been going on for many, many years. We will. I, I, but it seems like it nothing is changing. So at one point, so at when do we stop being Dr. King and start being Malcolm X? Well, I will say that Martin Luther King did a whole lot, though. Oh, he did. I'm not saying. I mean, I mean, I mean, he, he, he still. Yeah, did. Don't, don't take it that way. Of oh course. no, 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 what I'm no, no, no. But I mean, the Malcolm X portion is is putting a violent portion on it, right? So I mean, I mean, it, it, when you're talking about Martin Luther King, it was a there was a non-violence, even too violent, right? And so I, I for one, will want to see something that is more non-violent driven and actually say okay this is what we have going on these are the talks that we have if every single community did exactly what we're doing now getting out in the community doing barbershop raps being able to come on the radio such as this and have a platform i i'm not going to say 100 percent. i know that it's going to change but the conversation has to happen not only right here in raleigh north carolina it needs to happen in tulsa it needs to happen in oklahoma i'm in oklahoma it needs to happen everywhere and until that happens on a consistent basis until where you hold your chiefs of police in the communities in which you live in accountable and make them come to some of this stuff. I, I you won't see it. I don't know, man, because dude got popped on State Street. Um, like, was it last year, two yeah. years ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rolla, Rolla police and, uh, and we had, we had a black female commissioner. She didn't step up to the plate either. I was, I was, pissed. I was mad at her. But um, we're gonna move on, man. Uh, great conversation. Yes, sir. I, I think I think we uh, were able to handle and discuss a lot. And uh, hopefully y'all learn something. But we're gonna move on. I got a segment in my show called and now excuse the title, but it's called Really Nigga. This is where something that crazy happens across in the world. What's your take on this Waffle House shooting with it? Now, is this kid a victim? No. But they're but they're saying he might have mental issues. But when a black person I I agree, I agree. You know I agree. what I mean? Yeah, no, no, that there's always an excuse yeah. for for the white or the, the individual that's involved, Dylan Roof. They took this up from the Burger King after he killed nine people. My man got popped in California for holding a cell phone. So what do we do about that as far as being able to access AR-15s? Man, every time, yo. Every time the conversation get good, we go to commercial. But stay tuned. We'll be right back. More about nothing. 729thevoice.com. 
I was physically at school, but my mind wasn't at school. I had problems at home. That's when I met Narnice. She started helping me a little bit, like, Nia, I don't know what you're doing, but your future is more important. She's my strength. It takes a village to help somebody get their diploma. It changes your whole life. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Send him a text. He texts me back and say, "Who dis?" <laughs> <laughs> the next few weeks, she just made fun of me. Like, would answer the door and say, "Who dis?" Who dis? <laughs> Drop off a warm meal and get more than you expect. Volunteer at americaletsdolunch.org. Appreciate y'all for rocking with us. Uh, more about nothing on seven two nine thevoicecom um, This is this is gonna be our last segment for this show, man. So thank you all for tuning in. Uh, but real quick though, uh, I want to hear each one of you gentlemen's perspective on. The Waffle House shooting, number one, how you felt about it. Two, is there a problem with civilians being so able to access these type of guns? Three, what can we do about it, if we can do anything about it at all? I'm going to leave that to whoever want to go first. I mean, James Shaw, shout out to him for shout being, out to James Shaw. being heroic. Um, oh, yeah. I think it was... I think it was a smart move and a dumb move at the same time. Dumb on, move because he put who? himself in oh, on, him. on him. Okay. Yeah, oh, because yeah. he put himself in harm's way when he didn't have it. But, but that's part of his character, though. You don't. Yeah. That's not what you are when somebody's watching. That's what you are with nobody. Right. Yeah. And he said, you know, I'm gonna make this decision. You know, to go in here and try to save somebody. Right. You know, if I can disarm, I see he's he struggling there were, with it. Because there were four victims, there. and he, if he had he not acted, it could have been more. So oh, yeah, well, he got his stuff together. So yeah. I commend the man really for he. When he got him outside, you know, he put he put the gun in a safe spot, made sure well, put it away from him and got him away so that people could call. You know, I like that. But what you said about how we can stop civilians from getting those type of guns, I think that's just that's a that's a, a big mountain to climb. Because I would say you do like psych tests on certain people. I mean on people that in order to get, you know, certain type of guns or guns at all. But so many people, so many people need guns. Like how but not AR-15s, though. Yeah. I understand a pistol or a shotgun. Yeah. No regular Joe Blow needs that type of gun, man. But you don't never know. Like, you, you never, I mean, literally you never know. Especially in certain parts or in certain areas and certain counties and certain areas. I hear you. you definitely, I hear you, you never know what can come and attack your family, your house. And, you know what I'm saying? You got that old, you know, that old... Uh, Revolver in, in, in the shoebox and <laughs> Junior side. Of but, but if you got an SD9, that whole 16, 17 one in the chamber, you can take, you can handle yourself. Yeah. You know I mean, what but I mean? what's worse? I mean, but what's the same as somebody having a hundred round drum on a, on a, on a hand? All I need person. is one shot. That's what I'm saying. I mean, you all hope, I need is one shot. You hope. I hope, but you hope. I, how I, often do you shoot your gun? Every week, actually. Okay, that's what I'm saying. A lot of people that have guns, a lot of people don't even shoot them. A lot of people just have them. Nah, yeah. not go to the, like, not yeah, go to yeah. Eagle One weekly. Oh yeah, that's my. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I go to one weekend. That's my spot. Yeah, the yeah, old dude. Yeah, yeah. He's been yeah. In the, yeah. Man, the old, old, old marine. Yeah, yeah what yeah. you tell me? Yeah, uh, man. Me, me personally, man, I'm actually I was gonna say thinking you could, about you're like, in law, law enforcement, so you have an actual little bit more insight on this. Oh, uh, for sure. As far as access, I, I, I think I think some reform needs to come come in place. Somebody needs to do something about AR-15s, and now, um, I, I but like you said earlier. We're still talking, but no one's putting forth anything. Right. I mean, but you got to think about it. It's the industry. It's making money, right? So I mean, with tax dollars. I mean, I mean, it's it's making a, it's, it's making a ton of money for people, and for people to be able to say, you know, it's my Second Amendment right, and they don't want anybody to to step on their their Second Amendment right. They're talking about the NRA, and so many people. 
push money into the NRA so that they can actually lobby to make sure that these things don't happen. So, I mean, that is going to be a battle uh, to truly see because, I mean, I'm not sure if there's even – there's even the battle is even started yet. That's how that's how crazy it is right now. So, until they're able to, 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 to put something in place on, on that side to say, you know what, this is – this is truly something that we need. We need some kind of reform. I I, I don't know, but I, I definitely don't think anybody needs uh, an AR-15. But so, do you know anybody who has one? Oh man, I know I know tons. I saw of no bunch of people. No, no, yeah, I, I know, man, I know tons of people that have AR-15. Um, um, and, and and I get in theory why. I hear what you're saying. I'm not yeah. disagreeing with it. I'm just saying it's not a necessity to have that type of firepower. Yeah. In your everyday home, I'm not. I'm not saying you're wrong. I just. Oh, said, I'm, I mean, everybody's. That's part of being adult, man. Everybody got different views. <laughs> that's part I of being adult. I love these opinions, man. I mean, I mean, I and, that's and that's part of being an adult. And you're man. right, man. I just, I, I feel like you you can do more harm than good with that than that type of that that type of or level of firepower yeah. for a regular civilian. That's just me. I'm not saying don't arm yourself. I'm not saying don't protect yourself, especially if you have a family and kids. Hell yeah, you need a gun. Yeah, but the AR-15, bro. That, that's for military. That is for army soldiers, bro. Yeah. And here's the thing. And what, because now, you know, with, with the Parkland shooting and all of these white kids, oh my gosh, we're getting shot at. Mind you, it's only white kids shooting up schools. That's because we, we ain't going. Because yeah. you know what? Our mama, our mama beat our <laughs> ass. No, our mama, no, our mama beat our ass. That's, still, that's what that was. These kids finally entered, you know, hit, they got hit with their first hardship in life. Somebody told them no, and that they, they don't know what to do. But I was I, I said all that to say because I think what one of the suggestions was as far as the reform you were talking yeah. about was to uh you can't get guns until you're 21. Cool. This dude was 29, and did he did he did he looked mentally disabled when he got the gun because now they're saying he's he has mental issues they're trying to excuse right. what he did. So so I'm always leery whenever somebody says mental issues and they didn't even find the guy and they were like. Clearly, he He's has still at mental large. issues. Quote unquote, at large. No, I think I think they got oh, him. They got him? Yeah, they got him today. Okay. So, so, but my thing is like earlier, whenever they were talking about it, when he first ran off, he ran off into the woods. Um, and I was kind of with you on that. And the homo, he was ass naked. <laughs> yeah, he did. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, that's he, just, he came. Yeah, he came. He had nothing but a jacket on when he when he went into the Waffle House. It's, it's crazy. We're trying that's to get a Samuel Jackson for coming to America. Pretty, on, huh? <laughs> pretty much, nothing but a trench coat. Blast it, plop, plop. That's crazy. But I'm just. But that's that's my problem. With this quote unquote America that's all oh, racism so long ago. I love black people. I got I got black friends. Right. You know, uh, you, just, you, just a note out there, please. You know what I mean? That is just as racist as saying I have a black friend as being racist. Like I think that's so you're trying to who are you trying to to make that be, make believe that you're not racist? Me or yourself? Right. <laughs> it's yeah. like oh, I'm not racist. I got two black friends. Here's you're my eighty five. <laughs> you got two black friends. Hey, I don't know. Here's my thing, man. I I don't dislike white people. I actually love, like I said, I love a few, man. Love everybody. It's just hard to trust some of them. Uh -huh. That's my thing, man. I ain't even gonna. I ain't even gonna hold you. It's hard to trust some of us, man. That's true. You can't like, trust. I ain't even, no, like, you're right. That's sometimes I don't even trust myself. But but you know what? But I, at, I, but I, at I, the I, end of the day, man, if something going down and I got two people. To rock with me, yeah. Hey, bro, what's up? Yeah, you know what I mean. I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to Wakanda every time, <laughs> every time. <laughs> hey, but I'm depending on like, bro. If I got this, this, this dude, I just know ain't like that. But I got, I got Tommy over here that I know gonna come through. Verse ain't gonna hold it down. I'm like, look, man. I call Tyrone, and Tyrone ain't picking up. He ain't coming. He look, bro. I ran out of gas. You need, you still need me. I mean, look, bro, Tommy, come, come on. Teachers you know on, man. Teachers on. It's just, it's just different experience, right. different places. It, you it, know, it, like it, it depends on the person. Like I, if it's you or Tone or, or my man right here, then yeah, I'm rocking with y'all every time. But if it's somebody I just met versus somebody I know, well, for a you, long I, time, you know, yeah. what I'm saying, you I'm what I was saying for yeah, the sake yeah, 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 of yeah, 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 conversation, yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and and I think my my situation, I'm a little more sensitive to racism because I grew up Harney County. I don't know if y'all know about Harney County. But it's it's red next it's central red. up in there. Oh down. yeah, I yeah. know those clean streets of Holly Springs. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I'm just saying, growing up as a kid, I've heard the N word. Oh. I've heard boy. Yeah. I've seen you know dudes talking to my aunt crazy. But I'm like eight nine. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that yeah. stuff impacts you as a kid. And when you're that young and you see something not traumatic, but something that oh, it rattles your cage when yeah. you're a kid because you. 
I go to school, I don't have those problems with, with my white buddies. Right. But I see an adult talking like that. I'm like, oh, okay, man, now nah, it's, it's something different. Yep. But, uh, man, we we about to wrap it up, man. We about to get up out of here, man. Uh, T. Gresson, man, I thank you Yo, yeah. for taking the time out of your schedule, man. man I appreciate for coming you sitting me. in with us. Jamal, my right hand, as always. You all ready? T. Middleton, man, thank you, brother. I'm going to do it every episode, man, and say thank you for giving us a chance to rock out, man. You are listening to 729 The Voice. Download it. Stream it. More about nothing. I'm PJ Colvin, T. Gresson, Jamal Owens, Tony Middleton. We out. <laughs>